biggest questions that I get asked as a professional tennis coach by players and parents about becoming a better tennis player and winning more matches is how much repetition is needed to be better? Or how many times should I have private or group lessons every week? These are two great questions that can be answered with this question. How much time are you willing to invest in your endeavor to be your best? The answer to this question will dictate how many sessions and how much repetition you'll get to develop your game. Besides these three questions, there is one question that every coach and player must answer in order to develop into a winning competitor. And that question is, what kind of repetition is needed to win more in competitive play? Hi, I'm Sterling Strother, and along with my co-founder, Dan Travis, we want to invite you to be a part of this next episode of Winning Flicks at The Art of Winning. Most of us all agree that without a certain amount of repetition, whatever skill you're trying to develop will not succeed the way you want it when it counts. At the same time, it's not just about the quantity of repetition, it's actually more about the context of repetition or the quality of repetition. So let's face it, the way in which we practice repetition on the practice court rarely mirrors what happens on the match court. If you're not completely convinced that there is a disconnect between what you choose to do on the practice court and then what you must do on the match court to win, just take a quick inventory of how many times you serve and then reset to play the S1, the next shot after the serve, does it happen very often, or do you only practice your serve? How about when you practice the return of serve? Do you reset and then move to play the R1, the first shot after the return? Yes, you repeat the serve in practice, but you stop there. You may work on the technical parts of your return, but you stop there. How much time do you spend rallying back and forth up the middle of the court, or rallying cross-court with another player or coach? then ask yourself, how much does this kind of rally practice actually happen in a match? I'll give you a hint, it's about 10% of the time. So then how do you justify practicing something that happens 10% of the time? Well, it feels good in practice, and it looks good in practice. Unfortunately, it yields very poor results in match play when you start keeping score. In this episode of Winning Flicks, Dan and I are going to rip off the Band-Aid we're going to show you the revolutionary changes you must have the courage to make in your practice sessions to increase your win rate 100% on the match court. 